Hi, my name is Dick Muller. I'm a leather, leather craftsman and I've been working with leather pretty much my whole life. I started in 1964 as a 17 and a half year old guy and um, I got, everyone usually asks how I got started and I, I began because a girl I was going out with had a beautiful pair of sandals and they cost a lot of money. They were handmade in um, Cambridge at the time and um, I, I couldn't afford them. They were $25 for a pair of sandals and um, which today might be it might be three I mean most sandal makers now are 300 so I took hers apart and figured out how to make them went to a cobbler shop and bought a bunch of um, sole leather and fake leather strapping and nails and glue and made a pair and they were not very nice but I wore them because I was proud and then a friend wanted a pair and I, so I made him a pair and then I figured out I could make um, leather accessories so I was making leather earrings and bracelets and headbands barrettes uh, leather rings even um, and then um, I started making some belts I found some big buckles in New York City that were great for the hippie scene and um, began to make stuff like that and I went to a drugstore and see if to see if they would buy some of the stuff and they did and they put it in and they were selling pretty well so I had my mother and father and a couple of my brothers and sisters working in the cellar with me helping to make this stuff to cut it out and finish the edges and paint it and all of that and uh, then things were going along pretty well and I wanted to start a store a, a sandal shop in Amherst Mass um, and my father lent me $500, which was a sizable amount of money, but I was able to buy a bunch of tools because I had very, very rudimentary tools. Even after spending the $500, I didn't have fancy tools, but I was able to um, rent a store. It was actually a coal bin in an alley within an alley in Amherst, Mass and it had coal in it and an old boiler. And the landlord said I could have free rent for three months if I cleaned it out and then made it into the store. So I did it. And um, things went really well. And uh, I was able to pay my father back. And um, I, by that time I was making much better sandals. They weren't great, but they were much better and continued to get better. And I had found a lot of nice buckles for belts and I began to make handbags. Eventually I made handbags, belts, wallets. Um, I was making leather hats and capes and vests and um, at one point I hired um, some people to come in, a couple women to come in and help make skirts and um, um, leather pants. So we, we had quite a business going for a while and I had, I had four or five people working for us. Um, and when I say us, um, Diane and I, my wife Diane, we got married, um, it was, it was, I guess it was a couple of years after I had opened the store, and she worked in the store with me as well, um, and has continued all, all our lives to work in the business in some capacity or another. Um, so we went on like that for quite a while. Things were going well, but I, I was getting bored with working with the public every day and all the problems that come with that. Um, and I decided to go into the wholesale business. So I, I started doing craft fairs. And at a craft fair, the big craft fairs, um, there was one called the American Crafts Council Fair in Rhinebeck, New York. Um, buyers from all over the country that had small galleries and shops would come to buy our, our goods and in a couple hours I would write enough business to go that would last me six months or more and then they would those people would reorder so um, that took off and, and we worked really hard at that for a number of years but we were never making very much money in the meantime while that was going on we had goats and pigs and chickens and sheep and a cow um, 
and we were making hay and growing all of our own food as well. So it was, it was a lot of work and um, not very financially rewarding. Um, but we, we struggled through that uh, for quite a while. And then, um, so we continued the craft fairs for quite a while. Um, I think we did them up until wholesale, until about 1990. And then we quit wholesale and we started selling directly to the public. And we developed a really nice clientele of people in New York, Chicago, Boston, Baltimore, Maryland. Um, and people from the suburbs of all those areas came in to buy work from us. And they became very, very steady customers. Some of them I had met at craft fairs as early as the 70s as re retail purchasers. So they would continue to come and support us and eventually their kids started buying from us too. So we had quite a, quite a nice little business going on. Um, never really a great financial business, but a great lifestyle. And we raised um, two nice daughters and had a nice farm. It was great. And then um, in, the, in the 90s, we started doing some work for um, designers in New York City. And we were um, making samples for them for the runway, samples for their customers to see. and. Um, Sometimes we would do light production. So we worked for some pretty important designers in the city, making very, very high-end things. Um, primarily in, in around belts. Belts that, you know, movie people and singers and actors and people like that would buy. Um, so that, that was all great. And we worked really well at that. Then COVID came along. Things had begun to quiet down with the designers a little bit because they were all having financial difficulties in New York. Um, and then COVID came and everything got very quiet. And then we moved up to Vermont um, part-time from Massachusetts is where Diane and I lived, live um, part-time now because we're here and there um, to take care of um, my daughter Melissa's family during COVID. And um, we decided we love it, we're coming, we're staying, we bought a house two houses away. And I am now retired and loving it and love to be around the family. <laughs>